she used to love me Free fever got me and I had to go But now I never see that woman no more New York City is a place I've been Was there one time with a traveling band Young girl there wanted me to stay Think she wanted me to pay Roll it out, roll it in Here we go down the road again Drifter's wife is a drifter's life Don't say I didn't tell you so I love me go, gonna find me a pot at the end of the next big rainbow. Mike's Music Method. Come on in, everybody. I am incredibly excited to bring you this song, J.J. Kale's Drifter's Wife. I remember some 20 years ago learning this song in my apartment in Chicago and just like really grinding it out. So this song will always have a special place in my heart. I had to relearn it because no joke, I haven't played it in... Pro at least 15 years, so it's been a lot of fun. Thank you, Chase. Chase has been on a roll with these requests. Windy and warm. This one, what was the other one you just gave us, Chase? I can't remember. But thank you so much for sponsoring this song. Anyways, come on in, you guys. This is not a beginning Travis picked piece, so check out my playlist. I take you from zero to hero. Is that what all the kids are saying now? I take you from zero to hero in the Travis picking playlist, so check that out. Not a beginner piece, but this song is awesome. It's so much fun to play, especially when you get it fast. I'm going to practice it. I think I'm going to put it back in the repertoire. Um, if you're new to Mike's Music Method, we do measure by measure, very slow. I don't want to say tedious. That makes it sound boring. But very precise breakdowns. I'm going to leave you with no questions at the end, I hope. So you're going to learn this whole freaking thing, every note, every finger. You're going to own it. Timestamps down below are your best friend. You can always jump ahead. Go back at the very end of the song, as to your request, guys, there are always slow run-throughs of each individual section. So we get our microscope, we're going to learn it little bit by bit, then when you want to zoom out, jump to the end of the video, play along with me for a little bit, go back, zoom in, get better at it, learn more, zoom out, go to the end, slow run-throughs, you got it. We're going to do it. Mike's Music Method, to all my patrons and everyone who's been supporting the channel, thank you. You guys keep this free for everybody else. You guys are buying me time to make these videos so that the masses can learn and we can keep these amazing songs alive. We're not just a few people are learning them because let's be honest, this finger picking is hard. But what I'm doing here is whatever. I'm starting to ramble, but I'm excited for you to learn this song. Let's do it. JJ Kale, Drifter's Wife. And one thing I will promise you is that by the end of this song, the end of this video, you're going to have the G to the D slash F sharp transition down solid. I know that's a hard chord change for a lot of people. So in this song, in this video, you're really going to learn how to maneuver between that open G chord to the D with the F sharp in your bass, whether you're using your thumb or a different finger. So we, we are going to get really good at that in this song. Let's do it. All right, measure one. Let's do it here. We got a C chord, but our pinky is down in the third fret of that high E string here. And we're gonna pinch five and one. Sorry, I'm farting out already. And I'm doing thumb and middle. And then I lift the pinky and I'm pinching four and one. So again, I didn't mention, but it's Travis picked. Almost always, I think, always a two string pattern. Here it's five and four. So I'm pinching five and one with the pinky down. And I pinch four and one with the pinky lifted. And I'm using the middle finger both times. I suppose you could do the pointer. And I'm doing middle. And then here I'm doing the middle again. But what I'm doing is I'm moving my pinky to the second string. And I'm pinching five and two. But then we pull off with our pinky. Now if you're not great at pull-offs, remember I'm tugging a little bit down. Like I'm shooting a bow and arrow into the sky. And if I can tug down very briefly and let it go, it's going to sound way snappier. A pull-off is not this. You don't just like lift it off, like out towards you, the camera, right? I'm pulling it towards the floor a little bit. So it's snappier, right? You're getting some tension on it before letting it go. And it happens really quick. So that's what I'm doing there. Pinching five and two with my pinky down. I'm pulling off three to one. Then the thumb is alone on the fourth string right after the pull off. But then I go back to the second string with the pinky down. So it's pinky goes right back down and I go back to that string. Now I'm actually doing all that with my middle finger. I don't know why. You could certainly use the pointer um, or do middle and the pointer. It's your call. So really slow, measure one together. Three, four.
And actually when I'm putting that pinky down, I'm lifting up that three and I'm preparing for the G chord because that note D is an anticipation note. We're on the C chord, the note D is in the G chord and we're playing it a little bit before the chord so we call that an anticipation. So that note D is anticipating the G chord to come. One more time, three, four. Then I'm getting ready for the G. So measure two here is just a G chord and all we really need is a third fret on the sixth string. And the pattern is, remember thumb's doing six, four here, but it's six, three, four, two, and I'm doing thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, and then it just ends six, three, four, so three, four, six, three, four, two, six, three, four. So here is a B7 with an F sharp in the bass. Um, so it's kind of coming from this chord, but it's quite a bit simplified and, and not that involved. So I've got second fret on the lowest string. I'm using my middle finger here. Then I got my pointer finger on the D sharp, right? First fret of the D string. And then I've got the note A, which is the second fret of the G string. Two, nothing, one, two, two, nothing, one, two. And that's it, just those three fingers. And that's the measure there. So I'm pinching six and three, then I'm pinching four and two. So it's thumb pointer, then thumb middle. And then the second half of the measure, I'm pinching six and two, so it's two again with thumb and middle. And I'm immediately hitting the pointer finger. Six and two with the pointer. Then my thumb hits the fourth string. Then my pointer is going to hit the third, but I lift it and play it open. Another anticipation. We're anticipating the E minor to come. That note G is in the E minor. So three, four, Measure four is an E minor, very simple. We were coming out of that chord. All you need is the second fret on the D string, on the fourth string, that's it. Um, because we're never hitting the fifth string. And here we have another lift at the end. So the pattern is six, three, four, two, six, three. Then four is lifted open. And guess what? That note is D and the next chord is a G and the G chord has a D in it. Another anticipation. Let's try that again. Three, four, it's thumb, pointer, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer, thumb. Cool. Then we go to the next measure. Measure five is a G chord. So it starts on a G chord. We're just pinching six and three, and then four and two. So it's thumb, pointer, thumb, middle. Second half of the measure is a D chord with the F sharp in the bass. Here I use my thumb, um, and I'm, I'm using my pinky, but you don't have to. You're, you're playing the third fret on the B string and then the second fret on the G string. That's it. So it's like a D chord, but you don't need the high E because we're never picking it. Uh, and you can do those with whatever fingers you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm, for some reason here, I'm using like middle and pinky, but I could do pointer and ring if I wanted to, whatever is easier for you. On um, the nylon, it's just easier to for me to reach when I use my pinky. For some reason, I just can get a little more leverage, but however you want to do it. We're pinching six and two, and then we're going to the pointer finger on the third string, then the thumb is on the fourth, then I'm back to the pointer finger on the third, but I lift the chord, and it's a G, anticipating the G chord to come. Lots of anticipations, which make the melody a little quicker, and that's how he's able to get like more information in there, because it sounds like a lot of stuff, and it is, especially when you play it fast, and that's how he's, how he's creating that kind of cool, quick, um, motioned... Uh, whatever, you know what I'm saying. All right, so measure five slow. Three, four. One more time, three, four. Measure six, back to a G chord, and then a C. So the G chord is just six, two, four, three. Six, two, four, three. And then we go to a C chord. Well done. 
Measure seven here is a G chord, but we have our pinky down on the third fret of the B string. And here we get this cool blue note, all right? It's the minor third over the major chord, right? That sharp nine. And what we're doing, we're pinching six and two. Pointers on the third, thumbs on the fourth. Then we lift the pinky and do the second string. So six and two, three, fourth string, then lift the pinky and play that B string again. And the second half of the measure is back to six. Now I move my pinky up a string and I'm playing that real ugly note, uh, third fret of the G string. It's just six, three, and then open on the fourth string. Yeah, I got that cool minor third over the major chord. Bluesy. Love it. pitch you guys know the drill by now all right if you know the drill skip ahead if you don't just give me 30 seconds I'll try to be fast I'll try to be fast um the value for value model that's what we do here at Mike's music method I want to keep these videos available to everybody even people who don't have money or can't prioritize music in their life I want as many people to learn as humanly possible and the only way I can do that is by those of you who can support consider monthly support one-time support through PayPal, Patreon, Venmo, write me a check, snail mail. All this stuff is in video description down below or mikesmusicmethod.com under the donate tab. And that's it. The more you guys give to me, essentially you're just buying me time so I don't have to work, to work doing other stuff like teaching private lessons, which I will always do, but you get the idea. If you buy me time to make videos, then I can make more videos and that's how this works. So everyone who's been supporting, there's like over a hundred of you on Patreon and other people giving in through PayPal and uh, my P.O. box. Unbelievable. Your support is amazing. Um, I'm getting closer and closer to this goal of being able to put more and more time into it. it. Not that there's a goal in mind, but you know, just the more you guys donate, the more hours I'm able to put in every week to bring you this awesome content. It's the value for value model. If you guys aren't donating, you should still down below say, hey, to all Mike's patrons and sponsors, thank you so much. I value this channel. So those comments go a long way to encourage others who do have the means to contribute. So please do that. That's a great way to show your support. And of course, like, sub, do all the funny YouTube stuff to, to get the algorithms going. And we want the robots to be dancing and lifting up Mike's music method, okay? Just imagine robots lifting the framework and the bricks and the building blocks of the method and the, ro the algorithms, okay? Onward with the song. Measure eight is back to that D chord with the F sharp in the bass like this. Um, and here, yeah, so here what I'm doing is, again, F sharps in the bass with my thumb, and then I'm only playing the note A, second fret of the G string there. And that's it, because we, it, I don't know, technically we, get, we got the B in there, whatever. I'm not going to give you all the chord names, just think that it's, it's color, right? Instead of playing that note on the D, he's playing the B. And again, that B note is an anticipation, because <laughs> it leads to the G chord. I wonder if this was intentional on his part or not. Uh, I think he was just lifting the chord early, getting, I call it an open string cheat, where like if you're strumming from a G to a C, you'll, you'll cheat open really quick in between the transitions. And it's totally out of tune, but because it's fast tempo, it doesn't matter. It just sounds like a cool percussive effect. Where in this song, it, it not only is a cool percussive effect that he's creating by keeping that finger rhythm really quick, but it actually is notes in the scale because we're in the key of G, B is in the key, so is G. So I think that's what's happening there. He's just lifting the chord up to transition, but he wants to keep that rhythm really relentless and give it that cool peppy feel. So again, measure eight, I'm pinching on this D with the F sharp in the bass, I only need these two fingers. I'm pinching six and three, and I'm pinching four and two. And they're both open there. We go to the G chord, only need that note in the G chord, and pinching six and two. Pointer goes to the third, thumb on the fourth, and back to the second. So it's six, two, three, four, two. So the whole measure, three, four. 
you'll notice I'm already breaking my own rule. I haven't really decided. I'm so used to doing this chord both ways that I can interchange it without really thinking about it, where I can do the thumb over the top, or I'll put my middle finger there and do it that way with my middle and my ring. That might be easier for a lot of players. I know a lot of people struggle with the thumb over the top, and that's fine if you can't do it up that way, because there's other ways to play all these chords. All right, next measure, we're on measure nine, and oh, my face looks totally jaundice. Maybe I can touch it up post-production, I don't know. Gotta learn some new tricks. I, don't, I, I still suck at lighting, guys, sorry. Hopefully you can see the guitar at least, and who cares if my skin looks jaundice, right? I feel healthy, that's the important thing. <laughs> So measure nine, we get, we're um, doing six. Uh, it's back to that cool blue note where I got, I'm gonna start with my pinky down on the third fret of the third string. And it's six, three to the fourth, six, three, four. Then I'm pinching six and three, but I lift the pinky. So it's a normal G now. Then it's thumb alone on four. So six, three, four, pinch six and three. Thumb alone on four. Yep, right in the measure 10, just six, three, four. And in folk guys like Dylan and uh, Tom Waits, JJ Kale, these little extra measures, right? That's just like an extra one, two, and that's it. He doesn't finish the full four beats. It really adds this charm and organic feel to folk songs to uh, be doing two beats instead of four fairly frequently. All right, so guys, that's the entire intro. Um, Timestamps down below. I will do slow run throughs all at the end so this doesn't become tedious. Use those timestamps to jump around and practice the measures you need to practice. Does anyone else feel like when you start to make fun of this song, you can have a lot of fun making making fun of it? <laughs> I rolled it out, rolled it in, gonna get me all the gold at the end of the rainbow. It's like a little Irish ditty. <laughs> I mean, J.J. Kale, right? Kale? Kale's an Irish name. Someone tell me that's Irish roots, right? What does Kale mean? Now I'm making fun of Irish people, see what's happening here, but come on, it's a, it, especially if you look at J.J. Kale, it, you could just exaggerate him a little bit and make him sing about gold, and this would be an amazing leprechaun song for like a, a children's TV show or something. <laughs> I love me gold, gonna find me a pot at the end of the next big rainbow. Don't worry, guys, all right? I'm, a, I'm Italian and Polish, right? So that means I'm a, a greaser and a, you know, a disgusting pervert, as well as a like a bumbling buffoon who can't change a light bulb, right? So it's okay. We, we can live with our, ethnic, our ethnicities here at Mike's Music Method. Method. We're comfortable in our own skins, all right? Even if, if I can't get the lighting right and my own skin is jaundiced, I'm still here, comfortably sitting here, okay? So don't get offended. Don't get offended by the leprechaun jokes, Irish people. Okay? Okay? I know you're little and you look like leprechauns. That's okay. You Just live with it, all right? <laughs> Uh, doubling down. Sorry. All right. 9, 10, 11. We're on measure 11 here. And we start the verse. It's very similar to the intro uh, with just some changes in here. So we got the C chord. And he's going to pinch that twice. So it's uh, with the pinky down, 6 and 2, 5 and 2. Then it's just a 5, 2, 4. Then measure 12, we go to a G chord. Pinky is down on the third fret here. Start with a pinch and six and two, then the third string, thumb on four, then right back to the second string, but I have to lift the pinky to make it open, and then it just ends six, three, four, six, three, four, so all together. Measure 13, back to that B7 with the F sharp and the bass. And it's exactly the same as measure three, with the exception of you don't play the last note. You just stop on the thumb instead of doing that quick open like we did earlier. 14 is really similar to four, but a bit different. Back to the E minor, you just need the fourth string down there. We're pinching six and two, and it's three, four. So thumb middle, pointer thumb, and then quickly playing the high E string. And I can do my ring or just move my middle down there. Six, two, and then four, but I lift the chord. So three, four. Measure 15, back to the G chord. We've seen this before. Then D with the F sharp in the bass. 
but here we pinch six and two. Then I do third finger, thumb on four. Sorry, third string. Six, two, three with the pointer, thumb on four. Cool descending line, right? Yeah, then 16. And here we enter the C a little bit early, creating that cool anticipation, which we haven't seen on this chord before. So yet another anticipation, it's awesome. Pinching on the G chord, pinching six and two. Then the third string and the thumb on four. Then right back to the second string with my middle finger here, but I'm gonna put the C chord down. I'm gonna put the whole chord down. Actually, I stagger it a little bit. Put the first finger down and then I move the other two down to the C chord. So real slow, three, four. Then into the C chord for a five, three, four. And make sure you stagger it. I, I haven't really gone into that in detail ever, and it happens all the time, so I apologize to all you uh, MMMers out there if um, you've been missing this little trick here. Right, so I'm only I'm putting down that first finger, and then as I put that first finger down, I'm moving the other notes into that C chord. Measure 17. Awesome. It's so much fun to play when you get it too. So 17, it's a G chord with the pinky down again, third fret on the second string, and I'm pinching six and two. Third string with my pointer, pinching four and two, but I gotta lift my pinky on my picking hand, so it's open and open. Then it's a D chord with the F sharp and the bass, and here I'm pinching six and three. Then doing my middle finger on the B string. Thumb on the fourth string. Whole measure, three, four. Yeah. Then 18 back to a G chord. With that blue note, so six and three. Thumb on four and then two. So that's the beginning of it. doing six three but I put that pinky down on the third fret and thumb on four six three four whole measure three four then 19 just lift up that G normal G pinch six and three thumb on four six three Y'all are doing amazing. We're nearly there. Again, take the time to go to the end of the song. The timestamps are down there. Practice that intro, practice that verse. Really make sure your fingers have that cruising. And remember guys, this video, I'm giving it to you, but I don't intend you to learn it anywhere near as fast as I'm showing it to you. For some players, this song might take you several months to learn. Maybe you're doing four measures at a time every week. You're taking on two to four measures and just building it up slowly. As a teacher, I promise you people learn more quickly when they do this stuff slow. I would much rather hear my student, if I teach them on Monday when they come in next week, I would much rather hear them play four measures really well, with a good feel, on time, with confidence, make it very musical, nice tone, as opposed to them having gone through 20 measures of the song, or maybe they finish the whole song, but it's just, really quiet and uncertain and that's your you practice makes perf or practice makes permanent right let's see the more appropriate one so when you when you practice like really quiet and uncertain then that's how you perform right and I assure you most of the time people are impressed by a player when when there's just when it sounds good right and you can, may not be able to explain why it sounds good but it's present the tone is good it literally is satisfying to your ears most people don't really give a rat's bottom if you're playing something really complicated, if it's like sloppy. Like for example, um, like I'm moving my fingers quick, but like if the tone's really kind of fumbly, who cares, you know what I mean? I'd rather hear something simple and less of it 
with a really nice tone, and that's what you should always be aiming for. We're basically there, two tiny little notes. We have, in measure 21 of my tab, free to download at mikesmusicmethod.com, uh, we have this little part where he get, where he, every time he sings that, roll it out, roll it in, he subs that. So it's a normal verse, which is like, whatever, measure 11 to 19. But instead of doing those first two, we're gonna, 21 is gonna replace 11. And it looks like this. So that's it. So that we're in a C chord with our pinky down, third fret high E, pinching five and one, or sorry, yes, five and one. Thumb alone on four, and then immediately back to the first string. And then this is where things get hard. So it's a pinch, thumb, and then right back to the pinky. But I'm gonna pull that off to open. But this, at the moment I pull it off, I'm hitting the fifth string again. So I call that like a compound movement or it's like a two purpose movement. So I'm pulling off to open. And the moment I pull off, I'm also hitting the thumb, the fifth string with my thumb. This might be really hard for quite a few players out there. That can be a, a study piece in and of itself for weeks, right? And get that really smooth. All I'm doing is isolating the hard part, right? I'm doing the thumb of measure 21. And after the second beat, one, two, and three. And there's a pull off, one, two, and three. And maybe if that finger gets tired, Different string. You're just getting the concept down. It's not necessarily about burning out any one finger. And this is actually how I compose a lot of my songs. I'll take like a tricky element of one song and I'll create a little study piece and then before I know it it's like oh I just incorporated that thing that was once really hard for me to play into my own song and that, that's an awesome way to learn and um, be creative, right? And I, we already made a cool little ditty, right? Anyway, let's finish up that measure. We do that pull off, and then it just ends uh, second string, fourth. So right after that pull off, hit the fifth string, then pointer on the second string, thumb on the fourth. So really slow all of 21, three, four, chord, pinky is on the third fret of the second string, pinching six and two, thumbs on four, right back to two, same thing here, I'm going to pull off and then hit the sixth string at the same time. So from the beginning again. But at the end, we're just adding another third string. So that after that pull off and the hit at the same time, I'm doing pointer on the third string before I do the thumb on the fourth. Then measure 3 to 10, or sorry, then um, you would do measure 13 to 19, just finish the rest of the verse, just those first two are subbed. Quick song flow note before the coda. Um, after I think the rolled it in part, he does a little musical interlude, and that's just measure 3 to 10. So he almost redoes the whole intro, with, with the exception of measure 1 and 2. So he runs through 3 to 10, does another verse, and that on the final verse, which I don't know how many verses there are, you guys have to look that up, we get all the way to five, six, measure seven, and then he ends it by going to the coda, which is 24 in my tab. So let's do that from 24. It's that D with the F sharp in the bass. And we're pinching six and three. Then pinching four and two, and both of those are open. 
So again, it's like a whatever D6, I don't know how you want to call it. Or you can just think he's anticipating the G. Lift up the chord there. So 6, 2, 4, 3, then to a G chord. And that's pinching 6 and 2. Then the third string, thumb on 4, right back to the third. is on the G chord, just 6, 2, 4, then we pinch 6 and 3, but I got my pinky down on that blue note again, and we pull off that blue note, we pinch 6 and 3 and pull off, then the thumb alone on 4, so 3, 4, Just, you can strum a G chord. I'm just kind of hearing the six with, with a couple of the high ones. And you did it, Drifter's Wife. Yes, slow run throughs. We are going to take it from the, let's just do the intro. We'll, we'll do it to measure 10. Three, four. Slow run of the verse, measure 11 to 19. Three, four. Syncopated 16 there. Let's just play it again for good measure. Three, four. Let's do the roll it out, roll it in. So 11 and 12 are replaced by 21 and 22. And then we continue with the verse from 13 after that. So let's start from 21 here. Three, four. just the outro. We're going to play the intro again and then jump to the coda. So after we get to measure seven, we jump to the coda, which is measure 24. Two, three, four... <laughs> Love me, go, gonna find